Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever we are. Um, today we're going to look at finding the hypotenuse and the development of Pythagoras's theorem. So Pythagoras, the mathematician, crazy guy, basically had his own cult. Um, and even though this is his own theorem, uh, it was known before this, and it may not have even been him that worked it out in his own little cult. Um, crazy guy, but there's a bigger story to tell, which we don't have time for today. Okay, so the basics of it are that if we take the square of the two shorter sides, so we've gone through the hypotenuse, which we should be able to identify as being opposite the right angle. If we take the square of A and B and add those together, it's going to equal the square of C. What that means is A squared, if that's here, and B squared, I know that B's cut up, that's because of another example. They, together, will both equal that there. So all the space inside A plus all the space inside B will fill exactly all of the space inside C. Okay. And once Pythagoras worked that out, he could then show that as a an equation, and we can put it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay. So if we know two sides of any right angle triangle, we can actually find any missing side, including the short sides. Today we're just going to look at the hypotenuse, the long side, which is always denoted as c initially in this. You may experience it sometimes as being given a different pronumeral, so you might have something like I don't know, T, U, and V. Okay? But regardless, we always make sure that if that was V, that would take, just take the place of C there. Now we won't go into that, that any further until we do some work on it. So using that equation, we're able to solve some of these problems. First one here, we've got... Just get rid of some of those marks. We've got the two short sides as 5 and 12, and we want to find out that long side, which is the hypotenuse, which is given the value of C. So the first thing we want to make sure we have is that we know that our equations a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the first thing we can do is substitute in any known values. So put in, doesn't matter which one you have, like it doesn't matter that five is in A and 12, the longer of the short size is in B, both works the same regardless. So five squared, so pen's not playing nice to me. So five squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. Okay. Once we've got that, we start working out what we can. So 5 squared, we do that, is 25, plus 12 squared, which is 144. That's all equal to c squared. Now we can add those two together. So 25 plus 144 is equal to 169. That's equal to c squared. Now the last thing we have to do, we don't have C on its own yet. Okay, it's still squared. So we need to think about how we undo that. So the opposite of squaring something is to square root it. So if we were to square root C, we would get rid of squared there. And we have to balance it. Um, as an algebraic technique, so the square root of 169 is equal to 13. So we get C is equal to 13. Moving on from that, we can also have a go at this one. Same deal, C is given as the hypotenuse. You've got 2 and 5 as the short sides. You're going to do a different colour so it doesn't Make it too hard to see. 
So, as before, we have a squared equals, sorry, not equals, as the pen goes nuts. It's a bit better. Okay, start that again. So we've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we can now uh, substitute in the values we know. So we'll put 5 squared plus 2 squared equals c squared. Now, pretty easy again, 25 plus 2 2's two, two are 4 is equal to c squared. And then we're able to add those together. So we get 29 equals c squared. Now, as before, we want to get rid of the squared over c. The only difference this time is that we find that the square root of 29 is not as pretty and clean as our previous one, where c equaled 13. So this is actually equal to 5.385. And that goes on and on and on. So that equals c. But what we can do, instead of having it like that, we can express it as... Um, a third, okay? So that means we're an exact figure. So that means we can actually leave um, the value, instead of going to a decimal, it's actually more exact, to express our answer now as square root of 29 is equal to C, okay? And that is an exact form of the, um, an exact answer to our problem. So the hypotenuse C is equal to the square root of 29 rather than having to round off our number and use what we call an inexact figure. Okay, so that's how we find the length of the hypotenuse.